Hello friends! We are back from Hawaii. Things have been kind of crazy, but I have been wanting to do this wrap with me video. You guys left some awesome assumptions over on the community tab on YouTube um, and questions for me. I've got a bag full of bags over here. Got some wrapping paper. I've got lots of gifts behind me to wrap. So I'm going to do this more live style, so I'm not gonna do a bunch of editing to this video. Um, I'm just gonna wrap and chat with you guys, answer your questions, and then put it up because I've run out of time. So, hopefully we don't lose. We've got tape. All right, I already lost the scissors. This is, this is gonna be interesting. Let's see, what did I do with the scissors? Oh, they're up there. Okay. So, I always buy wrapping paper on clearance. So, we'll see what we've got in here. And I start. I'm going to grab the first question from our thing. Um, not sure. Deborah says, not sure if I've assumed anything. I believe that your videos are warm, inviting, and honest, though. Well, thank you. I try and be warm, <laughs> inviting, and honest. Um, I do get to the pleasure of editing out things that are like, you know, just that don't sit well when I watch them back, but we really do try and be honest. Charlotte says, I started watching your vlog several months ago and I really enjoy them all. Your family is so awesome. And yes, when you grocery shop with my youngest, it is with the youngest. It is so special. It warms my heart. Well, thank you. Everett is very heartwarming. <laughs> All right, I have Weston here with me to wrap his cousin gift for his cousin, Sean, for Secret Santa. And our YouTube family asked us some questions, so I'm going to ask you some questions while we wrap, okay? Let's Ooh, see. Cool. Wait, is it, so you can use it for a lot of stuff. This. This is an alarm clock, plus can play music, and it has all sorts of different colors. Okay, sit down. The first question, can you come sit next to me? Please, thank you. The first question is, do you like being on YouTube? Yes. This is heavy. You like being on YouTube? Yeah. This what? is heavy. Why do you like being on YouTube? We got six of these for him. Six cream sodas. Do you, I don't think we need to wrap those. Yeah, I have some. I have some paper we can put over them. So let's wrap this in this. So have you ever told any of your friends that you're on YouTube? Yeah. No. All right, we have Bennett here. He is wrapping his present for his cousin Chase, who is his secret Santa. All right, while well, we are wrapping, I'm gonna ask you a couple questions that our YouTube family wants to know about you. Okay. So the first one is, do you like snow? Yeah. What do you like about snow? I have a snowboard. Yeah? This person has lives in Australia and has never seen snow. Who? First time I asked that question. Vanessa? It wasn't Vanessa. No. It was a lady named Judy. Um, oh, another person said, how do you feel about snow? <laughs> what is your favorite dish to make for dinner? Uh, I don't know what Hunter's gonna say, paella. But what's your favorite dish to make for dinner? Uh, Hunter doesn't make paella very often. That's only at the cabin. Do I like? I like making cakes. You love to bake, but if you have to make dinner, what do you like to make? I like to make barbecue pulled meat. Pulled meat. Yeah. I might know. Okay, how do you feel about being on YouTube? Good. Okay. Why? What do, do you like it? Yeah. Even though you think our videos are boring? Yeah. Do you think all of our videos are boring? No. Just, just the shopping ones? Yeah, they're boring. How do your friends, do any of your friends know that you are on YouTube? And how do they 
react to that when they learn that? Couple kids in my class. Yeah, my whole class knows. And how do they react to that? Cool. They think it's pretty cool? Yeah. I have no assumptions about your family, says Kathy. I do like watching you all of your family do together. Such great love between you all. I do have a couple of questions. What is the coldest temperature you've experienced at your home? Do your boys ride the bus to school and do they have what you call snow days? Okay, so I'll start with that. Um, so what I'm wrapping here, these were sent by my mom. And so I'm gonna pull them out. And she said there's some bags in here to put all the kids stuff in. She also sent all the tags just in case we needed them. So the coldest temperature we've had at our house is probably negative 20, negative 25. Um, now in Alaska, if you live along the coast, you typically get a little bit more temperate temperatures. Um, so we live near the coast and so we don't get as cold as like Fairbanks, whereas they can sit at like negative 40, negative 50 for weeks at a time. Um, yes, my kids do ride the bus. Um, Hunter's bus ride is about 30 minutes. Um, he's one of the first people on his bus for the middle school, whereas the, um, the little ones that go to elementary school, they have about a 10 minute bus ride because they are one of the last people to get on their bus. So this is like the easiest wrapping ever. All the bags are labeled, all the things are labeled. So I am just putting them together. Do we have snow days? We do have snow days. Typically it is because of ice and not snow that we will have a snow day. Um, if it gets really icy and starts to rain, um, they will call a snow day. So it doesn't happen very often, but it can happen. Let me get rid of all these and then I'll go to the next question. This looks like some girly paper, so we're gonna wrap some of the cousin gifts. You guys, this is ridiculous. I don't even know if I can keep track of stuff. I, this room is like so tiny and so full of stuff, but Mark took the kids out. Their cousins are actually here. They went to go play um, in a gym, but I know I won't finish everything and I don't want to have to like have a second place I have to clean up. Okay, next question. I try not to assume anything. This is Rhonda, but I do have a question. When you were at a client's house doing the spices, you look like you were having fun. Do you plan on more of organizing for other people? That is a very good question that I ask myself all the time. I love organizing and decorating. I really, really love it. Um, I, if I continue to do it for people, I have decided I will just do kitchens and pantries because I really enjoy doing those and I feel like I'm good at them. Um, but if this YouTube community continues to grow, I don't see myself having much time to go into people's houses and take on many more clients. So I think for now, at least until Everett goes to school, I will not be taking on many more clients because that one was kind of like a trial run. And while I really, really, really enjoyed it, it was very stressful because I had to do it when I didn't have Everett with me. Anyways, what I really would like to focus on is getting my own house organized again. Ever since the boys went back to school, I haven't really spent much time, but I feel like starting the new year, it's time to like purge and reorganize every cupboard, every, I don't know. I think that's what I'm going to do in the new year. <coughs> would that be something you'd be interested in seeing? Because I'm feeling like my house is caving in on me. All right, Hunter, I'm going to ask you questions. 
While you wrap, what is your favorite subject in school? Social studies. Why? Why do you? Think, why social studies? Because I have a really nice teacher who um, was my one of the running coaches for the cross country running team, and he's nice to me. And I like learning about world history. Hmm. It used to be math because you were so good at it, but now that you're in advanced math, I don't think you like it as much. It's like, eh. It's really hard. It's too hard. Um, you can you, do some of it. I don't remember that stuff. What's your favorite thing your mom cooks for you? Mm, let's see. I like to, I like some of the bread you cook. That's good. Or your bake, I mean. Um, I like, I like the soup. But maybe you do like just, soup, yeah. Yeah, but maybe paella. But that's more like dad stuff. That is dad thing. That is dad's thing. So I'd say probably a good beef stew or something. Yeah. I, I really like that. You like chicken and dumplings. Yeah, that's I like, like that's a soup. That's a soup, but that's not my favorite type of soup. Okay. Mad Zabinga assumes you're on the fence about having more kids but might go for one more because you really want a girl well yes and no i would be happy I'm just gonna keep going with this one actually i i feel like maybe we're supposed to have another kid um i said this before if i could like choose like if i could like be like this is what i want to happen i would have twin girls so they could have each other and then be done i'm just not sure if my body can handle two more pregnancies so maybe one we'll see mark has made the comment that we would probably have five kids by now if COVID hadn't happened. Um, but them all being home all the time for that year and a half kind of wore us out. So we'll see what happens in the, new, the next year or so. With Everett going back to school next year, or with Everett going to school next year, I feel like, um, it would be like starting over. So we'll see. All right. Okay, Everett, do you want to come wrap some gifts for your cousins? Yeah, I don't want to get it. Just put it this way. It keeps getting broken. Okay. I want to go finish our chestnut. Ready? Yeah. Okay, can you get that oh, paper right there? Yeah. And can you get that tape right there? Uh -huh. Okay, Everett doesn't know it, but he got each of his cousins something from our merch shop. This is for who? Chase. No. Me. Sean. No. Me. Yes. Yes. From, this. From Reese Loves Pink. Yeah. We've had the cousins for the last two nights. They're home now. They'll be back tomorrow for Christmas Eve. But Luna attached herself to Reese. And Reese was putting on fake nails today and Luna was sitting there. And then Reese was coloring and Luna was sitting there and it was so cute. I just kept sending pictures to her mom. Okay. I'm gonna wrap this up. Tape it up? Yep. I know I didn't put some tape somewhere. Okay, people have some questions for you. Who, what is it? Okay, one, the first question is, what is your favorite sample at Costco? Um, <laughs> I'm the fruit juice. Fruit juice, yeah. Always love it when there's a fruit juice. Okay, next question. What do you want to be when you grow up? A doctor. Oh. And, oh, hold on, that's... Okay, here, can you fold that over and I'll stick it? No, fold it this way. Fold it this way. Oh, that works too, I guess. Okay. What do you like about living in Alaska? Christmas Eve. <laughs> Christmas Eve. Okay. I mean... That's not, that's, okay, what's your favorite holiday? Christmas 
Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve and Christmas Day? Yeah. Yeah. What do you like about them? Yeah. Christmas night is really good. From you, get the open your presents. Woohoo. Christmas night. Okay. What is your favorite food that mom makes? Mm -hmm. Okay, come sit here. No. I did not fill the apples when not even real. Golden apples? And why not? There's golden apples. But I think your favorite meal is one of them is salmon. Nope. No. Um, salmon skin. What about yes. soup? Nope. I love fish sticks. Fish skin, yep. That is one of your favorite things for the fish. He does like to eat fish skin. What about you love to eat spaghetti noodles. Yep. Yep. <laughs> okay, this one is for Sean. Sean got an, uh, nope, this is not. This is for Chase. Chase got an Alaska Boys sweatshirt. Oh yeah, Chase will love it. He will. <laughs> I really don't, Mary Morris says, I don't assume anything. I really believe you're down to earth, very kind hearted people. You will miss Everett when he starts school full time. Oh, for sure I will miss him. I miss all the boys. I I did love having them home, but I do enjoy some little more quiet time during the day. So, yes, 100% I will miss Everett. He is my little buddy. And I try to, I, I'd like to believe we're good, kind-hearted people. I don't think we're, you know, I, but we are human. We still have big emotions sometimes and, you know, get frustrated with each other. And But we try and be pretty decent people and help out people around us whenever we possibly can. So I would say that both those assumptions are right. Assumption, you and Mark work really hard financially because you have big long-term goals. Yes, for sure. Mark's parents have been an awesome example of this. You know, they worked really hard. His mom was a pharmacist. His dad was an engineer. And they put away for retirement. They paid off their house. They travel for about two months every winter and just really enjoy their summer. So that is kind of our goal. We want to be able to do that one day. And uh, so we've got big goals. We wanna pay off our house. We want to just be able to have, you know, uh, be very comfortable. Now that's not something that I really, um, knew much about like knew thought much about thankfully mark the accountant just make sure that we um, max out all of our retirement stuff every year and um, we make sure we have you know our rainy day fund and that we have stuff in investments so that it's not just sitting in our bank account so he takes care of all that and is constantly checking on it and making sure we've got what we need so I'm glad I have him for that. All right. I don't even know if you guys can see what I'm wrapping. Hopefully this is far enough back. Uh, I'm waiting for a microphone for my big camera, which has a front screen so I can see what I'm doing. But um, yeah. It hasn't come yet. Amazon has been very slow. Go this way. Sweet. What is your favorite inside activity? Yes. I didn't like a bit of it. I don't know. I know. I, 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 you like computer? You like drawing? 
Yeah? No? Alright. Okay. You got a piece of tape? What's your favorite outside activity? Soccer. Soccer. You like snowboarding? Yeah. Okay. If I play tomorrow, chest we got a chess board, I could be like that. You wanna you wanna learn how to play chess yeah. too? Yeah. Hey, can you get me another piece of tape? Or do you wanna do this part and I'll give you the tape? You fold it, I'll give you the tape. Okay. So he wants to learn chess. He likes um snowboarding and soccer and loves playing on the computer. Do you like to ice skate? Yeah. Don't do it that often. What is your favorite food? Hard one. Well, you can tell us a couple of your favorite foods. Sushi. Uh. Paella. Octopus. Anything with sea seafood, except what is that? Tiki masala. I don't really like it. You don't like tiki masala. Mm -hmm. I like the chicken though. Well, tiki masala is the sauce. Yeah. You can put it with other stuff. I thought maybe we would put his in this bag because it's got that bag. Do you want to wrap that? Yeah. What is it like living? Actually, my favorite thing to make is steak. Steak. What is it like living where there are earthquakes? Scary sometimes. So where were you during the big earthquake? The bus stop was Hunter. You, you need to come in about five minutes. With a couple of other kids and their dads in their dad's truck. So they were outside during the big earthquake, so they didn't feel the inside and like hear the house cracking and popping and things shattering to the ground. So they have a little bit of a different perspective about the big earthquake, but who? They're scary. Tara says, your family is a Christian family and really kind and easy to get along with. You invite more people to follow you while you're shopping. We are Christian. We believe in Jesus Christ. And, you know, I don't really tell many local people about our channel. Um, I have maybe about once a month, I'll have someone stop me in, um, in Costco and say, hey, why are you filming? And I'll say, oh, because I have a YouTube channel. Um, but I don't do a lot of promoting of our YouTube channel. I just let it grow organically. And um, yeah, I think I've only been stopped locally once by somebody saying, hey, I follow you. And then um, I did have somebody reach out and say, oh, my husband saw you at the store, but he was too scared to say anything. So if you ever do run into me, please say hello <laughs> if you're local. I would love to chat with you. Hopefully I'm not like chasing down a child or yelling at my kids. <laughs> I try and be authentic and not be, you know, yelling at my kids anyways in public or at home. I hate yelling. So sometimes it does happen. Not very often. All right, you guys, I need a system here. Let's see. I think I might have some bows in here. But I tell myself, I'm telling myself I'll remember who it's for, but I'll never remember. Okay. Taylor says, I assume that you have been an entertainer speaker before. Your videos from the start have been well done and you seem to be a natural at sharing your life. Love watching your videos. Thank you, Taylor. Um, so no, I have not been an entertainer speaker per se. But I, would, I think there's a couple of things that help with that. Uh, hold on, these papers are so long. First of all, um, I do have a teaching degree and you kind of are an entertainer when you're a teacher. I think you have to have pretty good presence and understanding of how to like explain things and talk to people. Um, I was a fifth and sixth grade teacher loved it. But, um, the other thing is uh, from a very young age from the, um, in our church, we speak in front of people. We are asked to either speak in our primary, which is the kids that are, um, you know, like 
five years old up to 12. And then once you are 12, you're often asked to speak in what we call sacrament meeting, which is the big meeting where everybody comes together. So I've just had lots of years of talking in front of people. Um, it's actually, I feel like it's easier talking, sometimes just talking to myself here and being able to edit it. Um, but thank you. That is very kind of you to say that. And I'm glad that you feel like I'm natural and, um, yeah. Thank you. What do you want to be when you grow up? Oh, wow. I could do that just a little bit, but, ah, this tape is fighting me. I'll fight it back. I won. Um, oh, gosh. Uh, am I doing this right? Uh, actually, yeah. then, So, I don't know. It could either be some type of pilot, which probably answers a different question than I heard. But um, maybe a pilot or some type of guide for either fishing or hunting. That's like- You gotta scoot back a little bit or it's not gonna go. That's, that's one of my like, that's not like my very first thing, but that's like, maybe like if for some reason I was a teacher, which I don't really want to be, and if for some reason I was, then I could have a summer job as one of those things. Oh, this is not this is supposed <laughs> to go back to your cousins. Uh, yeah. <gasps> Hi, Everett. Hi, Everett. Can you wait a few minutes and then help me wrap the presents for your cousins? No, I'm, I'm playing a game. You're okay. playing a game? Oh, here, we have some paper right here we can yeah. use for this. Come over here and play it. Okay. I want a burger ring. <laughs> a burger ring? Okay, next question Hi, is, yay! how do you feel about being on YouTube? Um, uh, let's see. Die, 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 it's die, fine. Die. Well, like, die, die. I don't know. I like the aspect of making money and having friends and getting all these cool cards and uh, being able to interact with people. And it's kind of funny a couple times that you've gone to school or been in a public place and someone has said something to me or my parents. So that's been fun. And, ugh. Yeah, we get to do fun things. Too. Yeah, and we also get we have more experiences, like and so we can even do, and our experiences are even getting paid for sometimes. So, by you guys watching these videos, that's nice to be able to go on more adventures because we have the money, and also we have to give you guys content, and that's or else you're gonna fade away and you're not gonna want to watch us. So, I think it's a pretty good thing. Is there anything you don't like about it? Sometimes you're in your office for a while. Yeah. Sometimes it takes a while to edit things. Yeah. You can get me out of this ad. And sometimes we have to like, we have to make content, so we have to like, I don't know, it's not a bad thing, but sometimes we have to be like really quiet. It's just kind of hard and you have three brothers who are. <laughs> uh, like him. Here, now it's over. Sarah Cooper says that you are genuinely good people with kind hearts, thank you, living a beautiful life and raising well-mannered children. Maybe not an assumption, but just an observation. Such a joy to see your lives on YouTube. Sending love from England. Thank you, Sarah. Um, we are trying our best to raise well-mannered children, but man, sometimes that's hard. They get into their silly little things and the things that come out of their mouths, you're like, Ugh. you don't know whether to make a big deal out of it. Cause I feel like sometimes with kids, if you make a big deal out of it, they like want to do it more. <laughs> but um, especially now that the kids are getting older, a lot of times I can tell Hunter be like, hey, you know what? That wasn't, pull him aside later and say, hey, you know, that wasn't very appropriate. And um, he'll be like, oh, well, what did it mean? Or he asks me to look up things that kids say at school because he wants to make sure that he's not saying something inappropriate. So anyways, um, Marcella says that Mark likes a simple life and sometimes you like a little extravagance. Hmm, well, that's an interesting one because I feel like Yes and no. Um, sometimes we, it depends on the, the, the thing. 
for activities. I, I don't know. I like to keep things kind of simple, you know, and he's very active and wants to go, 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 go. I don't know how to, I'm not sure how to answer that one. Um, now when it comes to like decorating and inviting people over and having a dinner, I think he would prefer to keep things simple, but he's very supportive and um, lets me do my thing. So yes and no. But I have to laugh because like, I don't know if you guys find this with your husbands um, and sometimes with their hobbies. Like I spend the majority of the money in our marriage, obviously, because I'm doing all the shopping and the, for the food and clothes for the kids and all that stuff. But I'm a pretty simple person when it comes to like my own clothes. I don't own any designer bags and there's nothing wrong with it. It's just not my thing. So it always makes me laugh because Mark will go, I feel like his hobbies are a lot more expensive than mine. Um, he'll go and buy like a thousand dollar backpack for hunting or a thousand dollar suit for diving, which is fine. He works really hard and to spend that money or really expensive bikes. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I've never bought a bag that was that much money. So we just laugh because we all have our things. Whereas I would, you know, I would rather spend that $1,800 on a couch and get a nice couch. So we all have our things. Next question, another assumption. Teresa says, your house is huge. I'm saying this because the lens you are using makes it seem massive. So I've always wondered. Well, just depends on what you're comparing it to. It is a very, a, quite a large house, especially that upstairs room. When we added it on, it made it feel very, very big. So what you need to imagine is how deep a garage usually is. That like almost two times, like one and three fourths times. So, because we added on on top of the garage. Um, and then like our playroom used to be a garage. So that's about the size it was. Um, so we feel very blessed to have our home, but the upstairs does feel very large because it's so open, which for most things is wonderful. Um, but we did go to a friend's house the other day and their house is older and it had more kind of like blocked off. And it was so quiet in their kitchen because there wasn't, there were walls and you couldn't hear all the kids playing downstairs. Whereas our house, because it's so open, you can hear everything. So. Okay. And last and least, last, Sean! Last but not least, Sean, you're right. Okay. We need some tape. Yay. Hey, can I ask you another question? Yep. What do you, oh, what, um, do you want mom to have another baby? Mm, yes. Oh, you do? Yeah. And I don't want it to be a girl. I thought you did want it to be a girl. Okay, you gotta stay. Mom, I don't want another mom. No, it won't be a mom. <laughs> It'll be a sister, like Reese. But. Okay, you gotta stay over here in front of the camera. But. The camera can't see you over there. But. Oh. You want a brother? Yeah! Oh. If we if we decide to have another baby, I'd be fine with a boy. 100% fine with a boy. But I'm going to take this. Here, I got the tape right here. We're running out of tape. We're at like the very, very last. What is your favorite part about school? The crafts. You like doing the crafts? Yeah. Oh. What is the best? I love, I had a candy cane crack. It was a... What? It, you, but... You make like a, what did you make out of it? A, a reindeer. reindeer out of candy cane, yeah. But I didn't want to add a nose. You didn't, you chose not to add a nose, okay. Yeah. Um, no, I, 
I couldn't. Hot blew it. Blew it to the nose. Okay. Oh, wow. You are full of energy right now. Okay, let me ask you another question, and then we got to find some tape. Um, I love my mama. I love my mama. I love my mommy. And I love you. I love my mommy. I love my mommy. I love my mommy. What is your favorite thing to do outside? Jump on a trampoline. What about in the winter time? What's your favorite thing? Snowball bites. Snowball bites. What about sledding? Do you like sledding too? Yep. And the favorite thing that outside is snow castles. Snow castles. Very fun. Okay. Somehow we gotta make some more tape up here. How are we gonna do that? Just have to find some. Okay. I think I might know where some is. Can you work on while I go find some tape? Back up. Back up. Can you work on cutting the paper along this line right here? Up, up. What line? See the little dots? You don't have to stay right on them, but can you try and cut that while I go find? Oh yeah, the line. Okay. Try and chop instead of just ripping. Got it, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll make it work. Um, this is it. That's it. Yep, it's not Got that a little, bad. Got a little mangled here, but that's all right. <laughs> oh, it's great. It's not too bad. Okay, you want another question? Yep. Okay, come back here by me so they can see you. And then we have Sean so shirt. Last but not least. Not so bad. Can you say last but not least? Not a last least. Last least. Okay. Let's see. What's the question? Okay. Brilliant but blue says, I assume Mark's hobbies can annoy you sometimes. This is another one of those questions where it's like yes and no. Sometimes when Mark decides he's going to have a new hobby, so in the last few years, he's had hobbies such as he got really into fat tire biking and road biking. And it just takes up a lot of time when he gets into something new. And then he also has to figure out kind of what he's gonna give up. Not, not that I'm asking him to give up, he just knows he only has so much time. Um, I honestly enjoy some time like when he's gone, like because life is a little bit different when he's gone. Like when he goes on a long hunting trip, of course I miss him and I wish he was home, but I just like cook more simple meals and do kind of simpler routines with the boys. We don't um, do quite as much stuff when he's gone. So yes, sometimes it can be a little bit annoying, but as long as we plan things out and we make sure that we're both getting what we need, whether that's like hiring a babysitter um, or be getting the house cleaner that we've recently got so that I don't feel like I'm whole, like his hobbies or my hobbies are taking over. Um, we just try and be careful that we don't, um, you know, we don't, like not give the other person the time that they need. And if that's feeling out of balance, then we've got to say something to each other. So um, I don't feel like I get annoyed all that often. We, we plan it out pretty good to make sure that we're both getting time that we need. Kay Smith says, I love your family and your channel. Thank you. I love that you show your faith in a way you treat people. Thanks for providing some family friendly TV and not trying to compete with the Joneses. I love how you live off the land too. Well, thank you. I really don't feel like there's any need to compete with anybody because one, we can all be, you know, we can all win. I feel like there's room for everybody. I feel like there's room for everybody to have good things in their life. And then I also don't feel like it uh, benefits me to, you know, 
try and compete with anybody. Um, anyways, and then living off the land is not something that I expected to do, <laughs> but it has become some part of our, just the culture of our life and I'm grateful for it. So thank you. I appreciate that. Teresa says, you are a normal, happy family and try hard not to make it seem otherwise in your videos as you don't aim for perfection or a Pinterest worthy life. Oh man, true assumption. Like sometimes there's time to, to make things beautiful and stuff, but most of the time, I don't know, especially in the last two years, I feel like some of my creativity has just like been sucked out and there's no, there's no room for like Pinterest perfect. I want realistic. I want to show that my house is messy, but also that we clean it up. Um, my kids help clean. That's reality. Like, um, I'm not going to decorate a room just for a picture. I'm going to decorate it the way that we, um, that we live in it so that people see it as it really is. So I would say that's a true assumption. RW3 mom says, I assume you miss your kids when they are at school, but enjoy the quiet correct assumption. I really do miss them. And I love like Christmas break and stuff that we can all spend together. And she also assumes that you do a lot of laundry. Well, that is also a correct assumption because four kids that get sweaty and you know, all that stuff. Correct assumption. Okay, I'm gonna show you something cool that came in from our um, spread shirt shop. Got some new stickers. So I got one for each of the boys to put on a water bottle or something. Um, this is the first time I've ordered Alaska boys stickers and I ordered this new, this Alaska Life sticker. So thank you to all of you that have ordered something from our spread shop. Um, I did just get in some cool things. I ordered myself a shirt. Um, it looks a little bit big, but it's a unisex tri blend. And this is the kind of shirt I was looking for. I sent the shirt, the first shirt I ordered, I sent it to one of you guys, Tammy, um, because I just didn't love how it fit me. This one I think is going to fit great. And it's the feel that I was hoping for. I ordered a kid's apron for when the kids help me in the kitchen. I ordered myself an apron because I think it'd be fun to wear, you know, our merch while I'm in the kitchen. I got myself a workout shirt so I could represent at the gym. And then each of the boys picked out something that they wanted. This one's for Everett, so I'll wrap this one up here in just a second. Uh, this one is for Hunter. It's a little Alaska Boys shirt with a hood. Ordered Mark an Alaska Boys sweatshirt. And Bennett an Alaska Boys sweatshirt. So I thought that was a perfect thing to give each of the kids as a gift. And we also do um, cousin gifts. And so my sister, we used to do it. We used to have more cousins around to exchange with, but now it's just my sister and I that are here. So we, um, she has three kids and I have four, obviously. So what we did was she's getting a present for Everett and then Everett got each of her kids a present, which is going to be a shirt from our merch shop so that they can represent our channel with us. So, I thought that was kind of fun. All right, I would like to know if the boys ice fish over the holidays. Do we ice fish? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And what kind, it asks what kind of fish we catch. You know? Salmon. Some little landlocked salmon. Trout. A trout, rainbow. Yep, rainbow trout. Yeah. You put it down where you folded the paper to close it? Yeah. Um, do the boys play hockey? No. No. We'll play like just 
pass the puck around, but none of our kids are in hockey. It is a really big commitment. And with four kids, that would have been, that would be a lot. It would be, it, there are some families that do that, but um, it's not something that we do. I our like boys ice all, skating. you like ice skating? All of our boys are in cross country skiing and it's a great activity for all of them. Okay. Do you enjoy school? Yes. Yes. What, what parts of school do you really, really like? Uh, recess. Uh, inside recess. <laughs> P.E. Yeah. You're very good at math. Yeah, math. He's really good. He's getting really good at reading. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, one more question. And uh, I make friends at school. Do you love the snow? Not that much because my brother is pushing in the... Uh, push sometimes. Push Ooh, sometimes you get pushed face first in the snow. That doesn't yeah. that's not doesn't feel very good. Yeah. But there are a lot of fun things to do in the yeah, snow. Yeah, like, there's not like snow Yep, and playing in the snow and Maybe making snow forts. Yeah. Yep. All right, Westy. <coughs> Thank you. Can you take that upstairs and put it under the Christmas tree? Uh, Daffy. I assume that you are all happy and encourage each other to do your best. That is a correct assumption. Um, I have felt that recently with um, Hunter being in an advanced classes. I've had a lot of discussions on about whether or not he's doing his best and if he's doing his best, then we're just gonna be happy with that. Oh my gosh, that's a huge bag. I think I need that big of a bag. Next assumption. Teresa said, assumption, you will always live in Alaska. Well, unless something very dramatic happens, then yes, I think we will always live in Alaska. We will at least always have a home here. I would see us more traveling when we um, get older and retire and not even living somewhere else, but who knows? After being in Hawaii last week, I would uh, love to have a home in Hawaii. <laughs> but we looked at some of the real estate while we were there just because they have like things posted in the windows of some places and my goodness things are so expensive there I couldn't believe it like Mark was thinking that our house would be worth like three million dollars there which is not near anywhere near that here that was his assumption he actually got on and looked at um, Zillow, and I showed you our um, our Airbnb while we were there. He said that that was going, I want to say it was like $800,000 for one of those, which it was like a little one bedroom. So, crazy. So, assumption correct. I think we will always be in Alaska unless something happens. What is your favorite thing about living in Alaska? If you want to hand me the tape, I'll help you. Uh, there's snow and it's not hot. <laughs> I hate hot. I don't hate it. I like it once in a while, but I don't like just having it all summer and all winter. He likes the different seasons. Yeah, my kids don't like really hot. Or we'll die. Do you know what you want to be when you grow up? A PE teacher. A PE teacher. Do you want to ever learn how to fly an airplane? Maybe. I don't know. I get sick in the airplane, so maybe not. I've heard that when you're flying, you don't get sick. Like, Paul gets sick if he's the passenger, but he doesn't get sick if he's flying. Because you're focusing on it. It's like you don't get sick in the car when you're driving. That's good. Well, we could tape it around the top. What is your favorite subject in school? Math. Math. Math and then PE. What is your favorite animal? Penguin. Penguin. 
Do you like baseball? No. Oh, I like kickball more. Well, okay. Maybe. What I is like your favorite holiday? Christmas, because it's my birthday one. Do you like Two. December and Christmas and birthday all together? Um, what is your favorite thing to do with your mom? I don't know. Okay, so the juicy ones. Uh, what do I do? Bake? Bake. What's your favorite thing to do with dad? Uh, go outside, play. Hunting? Hunt. Stuff Hunt. outside. All those count. Okay, thanks, bud. Is that all? Yep, that's it. I want more juicy questions. Well, I can ask you more questions, but... Yes. It says, what do you want... What are you hoping to get for Christmas? Uh, a free diving suit. Uh, not very much else. That's a little hard to go to the store for, but okay. What is your favorite restaurant? Ronnie's 2. Ronnie's 2 Sushi. What about fast food? I don't like Burger King. I've never had it. So, <laughs> ding that off my list. Uh, Kane's Chicken. Subway? Yeah, two. Spicy Italian. Spicy Italian sandwich with lots of veggies. Okay, do you want your mom and dad to have another baby? Maybe, I don't know. Okay, you would be very helpful with that if you did, if we did have a baby. You're good with babies. If you're asking me, no. <laughs> Why? Hey. They wouldn't be good at chess. <laughs> Lacey, I assume that you're a patient, kind, loving, God-fearing mother and wife. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. My question would be if you all plan on having more children, and how did you and your hubby meet? Can't wait to watch. Okay, so... Um, Oh, that's not gonna fit. All right. Let me find another gift and then I'll answer that. One of these bags will be perfect for this. That bag is broken. Oh my goodness, what is even here? This will work. Okay, so. Do we plan on having more kids? That is up in the air. We'll see what the next year brings. Um, there are a lot of days where I feel like, well, our family is complete. And then there's other days where I'm like, oh, I feel like something's missing. So we will pray about that and uh, figure out what God has in store for us. And uh, But I think we have a lot of choice in that too. So we'll see. We will see. Um, and then, how did we meet? So, Mark and I woo, both grew up here. But we are four and a half years apart. So, I never really, we just kind of, our paths never crossed. Um, except for one time I saw him right when I moved here when I was 14. I saw him from afar. My friend said, oh, that's Mark Han, he's so cute. And I thought, oh, he's really old. Cause I was like, you know, 14 years old and he was 18. <laughs> I'm not doing very well at keeping this moving along so that I don't have to edit it. Oh, well. So, if you want the full story, that was a terrible thing I just did. It did. Is this gonna cover? Nope. Okay. <laughs> Oh, try something else. Oh my goodness, you guys. I think this is another. Try something else. Feeling a little flustered here. I don't know what's going on. Okay. All right. How did Mark and I meet? We were home for the summer. I actually was dating a boy. And Mark had a girlfriend when he first came home for the summer. Um, so my boyfriend had gone away for an internship in Mexico. And um, let's rewind. Because I love to see how um, God's hand was in this whole process. So I had a boyfriend. His name was Brandon. Not that that matters. Um, we had dated for quite a long time, 
but um, and he was a great guy, but I didn't really see how it was going to work for me to get back home to Alaska. I really wanted to live in Alaska, but I never really, that was never had to be the end all. But anyways, I had dated a boy previously and because of that boy, I had not come home for the summer. And I, um, it was miserable. I had stayed at college and worked and I only came home for like a couple weeks and I realized real quick that that was not cool. I needed to be home for the summer. And so I, that, that boy and I had broken up and then I got a new boyfriend. So a year later, I have this boyfriend and he says, I didn't take this internship because I'm gonna stay home to be with you. I said, uh, I felt like the Holy Ghost had, had like confirmed in my heart that I was supposed to go home for the summer. And so I told him, I said, you go back and tell them that you want, you want that internship because he really, really wanted to go. And I said, I'll be here when you get back, just go. And um, he's like, oh, I thought you would want me to stay. I said, no, I, I have the confirmation that I'm supposed to go home for the summer. So I came home. He went to Mexico and I wrote him faithfully every week telling him what was going on. I was working and enjoying the summer with my dad. Uh, we were fishing and biking and camping and all that stuff and it felt so good to be home. And this boyfriend wrote me an email and um, broke up with me via an email. And I was pretty sad because we had dated for a while, but, um, you know, I just thought, okay, well, I'm glad I'm home. I'm glad I didn't stay and wait around for him. So, lo and behold, at the same time, Mark and his girlfriend had broken up, just independently, you know, I we didn't know each other. And so I started talking to this guy at church and his name was Paul. And he, I told him I went fishing with my dad and he was like, oh, you go fishing? I said, yeah, I love fishing. And so Paul had a girlfriend. So he told Mark, hey, there's this girl that likes to go fishing. And so, oh. So Mark went on a trip. He was going down to Mount Rainier to go. Uh, he hiked the top of Mount Rainier in Washington and then he snowboarded off the top. And while he was there, I guess he decided, I'm going to ask that girl out when I get home. So I. About a week later, and this was all through church, about a week later, I was sitting at home and I was watching the show, um, it was popular then, So You Think You Can Dance, and I was watching it and I just kept getting this impression that I feel like was... God help nudging me along saying, you need to go to park night, which was when the um, 17 to you know 30 year olds get together once a week to like play games at a park, like Frisbee and things like that. And I thought, I don't want to go. I've never gone to any of those. I, but I just kept getting this impression like, no, you need to go. So finally, I just kept thinking like, oh, after the next, after the next dance or whatever. So finally I got my bike and put it in the car and went and lo and behold Mark walks up while I'm talking to my friend Rachel and he's just starts chatting he and Rachel were good friends growing up and so he starts chatting with Rachel and he had this you know he had a beard because he'd been hiking or he'd been out on the mountain and um, anyways Finally, he goes and plays, 
he, he goes to play the ultimate Frisbee game and then he comes back and he's like, he asked me out. He said, do you want to, do you want to go on fishing with me on the Russian? I said, yeah, my dad and I are going this weekend. So kind of, I invited my dad along <laughs> on our first date. So Mark, I was like, oh, he's like, well, call me. I said, no, you need to call me. So I gave him my number and, um, he called me a few days later, kind of like, oh no, I think, like, does she really want to go out with me? Because she invited her dad along. That's kind of weird. So anyways, I I told him my dad did not have to come with us on our first date. My dad was on the river at the same time as us. He was fishing for salmon. Mark was teaching me how to trout fish. So... That was our first date. That's how we met. Oh my gosh, that was a long story. I'm sorry. I just got chatting and ended up cutting this piece probably too small again. Um, but that is how we met. I messed up. Let's try one more time. I'll use those pieces. So we just continued to date um, through the whole summer. Pretty much after that first date, we were kind of inseparable. We had so much fun together. We went hiking, we went biking, we went fishing. Um, I thought he was great. He was from Alaska. He got along with my dad. Um, yeah, so we kept dating. We went back to BYU where we were going to school. We went to the same college, which was very convenient. We went back, finished our degrees, and then moved home. Well, finished our degrees, got married, and then moved home. Do you want to hear the crazy schedule of our weekend? We, we got married one day, then the next day we graduated and walked across the stage so we got married on like a Thursday. We walked on Friday. We had our reception on Saturday. And then we moved into his sister's house basement on Sunday. And I started student teaching at a year round school on Monday. So it was like the biggest whirlwind weekend of my life. It was so busy. Okay. What is your favorite animal? Uh, I can't say. I don't know. You don't have a favorite animal? That's okay. No. I don't really have a favorite animal either. Well, maybe a moose. Do you have a favorite outdoor activity summer and winter? Uh, wait, do they have to be the same thing? No. Like, oh. what's your favorite summer one and what's your favorite winter one? So, I guess... I like fishing and hunting equally because they're both kind of going for games. Get me out of this to... Okay, Everett. It's kind of, it kind of, it sounds kind of weird, Stop. but it's kind of a fun me. way of get, getting your get food. Get down, get down. It's a funner Please. way of getting your food okay. because the... <laughs> if that keeps happening, you just need to pick a different game. Okay, keep going, Hunter. What was I even talking you about? You said uh, hunting and fishing was a fun way to get your food. Yeah, and yeah. May, sound, may sound kind of weird, but the, what was it? I can't remember what I was saying. Uh, That's okay. But like, the, it's not, the, it, the fun isn't like killing the things. It's the fun is going and being outside and uh, being with your family or friends or just being able to go outside and be with nature and see, experience cool things. Yeah, that's, I like, like the whole circle mm -hmm. of life thing. Mm -hmm. Like you like that, the whole part. It's mm -hmm. not just the, mm -hmm. the, death. the animal. It's like, that's not one of my animal. least favorite parts. Yeah, but it, I, I feel, I like eating it. I feel gratitude when I get an animal. How do you feel? Do you kind of feel humble? Like the start, I feel excited. And kind of like 
yeah, like excited and stuff. But at the end, it starts. It's just like, yeah, I got one, and now it's gonna provide for us for a while, and it's kind of humbling. Yeah, it is kind of humbling. It, I don't. I always feel very grateful. All right, do you want to answer one more question? Is it pilot one? Nope. You already answered that. What oh, is yeah. your favorite holiday? Business. Christmas. I'm not asking you yet. Uh, I'm asking Christmas. Hunter. Uh, so pretty much. From December to the end of January, because <laughs> that's where all the fun happens. Because you got Bennett's birthday, then you have my, then you have Christmas, and then you got New Year's, and then you got my birthday. Yeah. And then I guess in February you got your birthday. Yeah. So, so from December 13th to January 14th, it's party time around here. All right, love you, Hunter. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I'm just getting tired, you guys. I feel like I just started too. Okay. I love that the question, I love this question and we get to wrap presents with you. Yay. Okay, Judy, there's nothing, there's absolutely nothing that I can criticize about your channel, Lauren, or beautiful family and Luna. One and only question is, all would be, do you love winter and snow? Hugs from Australia, Judy. Um, I would say that I prefer the... I prefer summertime, but I have learned to love and embrace winter because there's so much of it. And I do think it's beautiful when it snows. I do love playing in the snow for a, if you can get warm and nice afterwards. So I do love, I love having all four seasons here in Alaska. Janice says, I have the assumption you must be a little worried about Mark's activities. <coughs> With four boys, it must make you a little apprehensive. It would me and he that he stay safe. I know he takes all the safety precautions, but it would still make me nervous. Um, I think for that, I rely on my faith a lot. I feel like Mark is very careful, like you said. Um, I don't get too worried too often. Unless there's like... He gives me a reason to be worried, like sends me a text that makes, you know, that I have to worry. I really feel like, um, if you guys watched my Hawaii video, I follow a life coach, Jody Moore. And a lot of the times your, I believe your thoughts create your feelings and your feelings create your actions. Um, so I don't spend a lot of time worrying. I would rather pray about it and then move on, um, and just feel confident in what we're doing and feel confident that God has a plan for us. So not a lot of worrying going on. A lot of encouragement, a lot of like, I watch him plan and plan and plan and plan and plan. So I know that he's not going to do something just silly. But there are always risks, but there are risks just going for a drive too. So I assume that you miss Texas, but that you're now in love with Alaska. So I moved from Texas when I was like 14. Tell you a few things I do miss about Texas. Okay, one of the things that I miss about living in Texas is that we were constantly going on road trips growing up, um, and I love that you could just uh, drive and get to places a lot easier than you can here in Alaska. I don't have my tape um, because, like, I yeah, I love to just explore new places. I really wish that I could just maybe take six months and go drive around lower 48 again with my kids and visit all sorts of places. Maybe one day we can do that because um, that's just like was my childhood. My dad loved to drive. Now he also worked for FedEx and back then we could fly Southwest for very cheap. So we would fly a lot, but I like having my own car when I go places. And so I just, that is one thing that I miss about living in Texas. I felt like that was a lot easier. Oh, that's like barely, let's see. But other than that, I just, I really do love living in Alaska. There's not many regrets. 
about moving to Alaska in my, from my perspective. Um, I became very, very close with my dad when we moved here and I will just always treasure that. Um, and um, I found Mark here. My sister, Michelle, found her husband, Chris. My brother, Reggie, found his wife, Ryan. My sister, Megan, found her husband, Scott, here. So, like, if that doesn't tell you what we would have missed out on if we hadn't moved to Alaska, I don't know what does. So, my other two brothers, I have a brother, Chris. He was already married. He got married when I was four. And so he was long married by the time we lived here. And I have another brother whose name is Brad and he passed away when I was also four. Um, very close. Those two things happened very close together. He died in a car accident. So um, other than those two, the rest of us found our spouses in Alaska. So I would say it was a good move for our family. Okay. Marie says, I assume it is hard living in such a cold place. Um, I think once you're used to it, it's not hard. But also a lot of your thinking, I think affects it. Um, so I don't, I would, I don't think it's hard. I think it takes planning, making sure that you have the right clothing and the right equipment to stay warm. And then, um, you plan a trip every once in a while to somewhere warm. Um, yeah. I wouldn't say it's hard. I know there are other people that would say it's hard, but I would never. That's not. I think if I were to think it's hard and say that it's hard, then my brain, because I know what our brains do, my brain would start gathering evidence that it would was hard. I would start thinking about, oh, I have to plow, and oh, I have, it's so cold, but um, my brain thinks, oh, it's wonderful to live here. I love it. And so it gathers evidence of all the things that it loves about winter, like the beautiful, um, the beauty of the winter, the snow on the, the, Alpine glow, which is like the pink on the mountains. Now that doesn't, that's not to say that some days are not hard and you're like, man, it's dark and cold, but I quickly like catch myself and try and gather evidence for why it's not so bad. Assumption, you will never go vegan. You don't believe plant-based is best. Teresa, that is a true assumption. I will never go vegan, but I don't, I, I think it's fine if people go vegan. That's their choice, but we never will. Um, I may have a child that does, and that would be their choice. But at this point, they all love meat. So, um, Marcella says, I never see you hunting. Fishing, yes. I assume you don't like to hunt. Um, <laughs> this is a fun assumption. So, I, let's, let's see, what have I hunted? I have hunted a, I've gotten two moose and I have got a deer. Um, the problem with me going hunting is that at the point that we are in our lives, I, I don't love hunting enough to like go by myself. Like I don't want to plan a hunt. I know there's women that do want to, and that is great. I just, that's not something that I'm like, oh, I can't wait to go hunting. Um, so I would say your assumption's correct, but it's because it is so much work for me and Mark to leave to go on a hunting trip. So my first moose that I got, we got it on opening morning. We flew in the day before, got it on opening morning, um, packed it out for two days in the rain, and then got fogged in for like four days and couldn't leave the tent. So like that's stressful to not be able to come home and get your kids and be in contact with your family. So I would say that's 
for at this point in our lives, that's a strong yes. I don't love it as much as Mark does. I am very happy to have him go or have him now start to take the other boys because then I can be at home, take care of the things I like taking care of, and then I can be home ready to help them process the meat. If I go on the hunt, it's hard for me to get really excited about um, then having to go home and process it too because you gotta play all the catch up that moms do when you get home. So, yep, that's a good assumption. Where did I put the rest of it? Okay, let's find which picture this is. I keep one of them. been a good thing to put in a bag but that's okay how long have you and your family lived in Alaska are you from Alaska I moved here when I was 14 Mark is born and raised here so other than going away for like what four years of college I have lived here I've now lived here longer than I lived anywhere else. I was actually born in Virginia and then moved to Texas when I was one and then moved here when I was 14. So I was in eighth grade. So I went to middle school here for one part of one year. We moved from Texas in November and that was a shock to the system, for sure. What is your favorite sport? I can't even do that many sports. Do you like, would you rather do a soccer ball or a football? Nope. Neither of those? What about, let's see, what do you like to do? Do you like to run really fast? No. You are a fast runner. You want to see how fast I can run? Here, let me let me hold it. And you show us. And then, do you want to tape this? You can show them right here. Yep. Wow. You're also a very good jumper. I know. Yeah. Okay, let's come back and let's finish wrapping. Is baseball. Oh, baseball, yeah. Oh, careful, you're stepping on the present. Okay, put this back up there so we can finish. Our battery's gonna die, so we gotta be done. Okay, next question. I love you, Mom. I love you too, Everett. <laughs> next question. What is your favorite thing to do with Mom? Mm, cook. Cook? Yeah. Do you like to go to Costco with Mom? Oh, yeah, I like that. Do you? So much. Yeah. So I might get all the samples. <laughs> Do you like to read books with mom? Yeah. Do you like to sing with mom? Yeah. yeah. What is your favorite thing to do with dad? Uh, watch TV. <laughs> <laughs> Wrestle? No. Play g games on the computer? Yes. Build Legos? Yes. Legos, you love to do Legos. But not so. I was just done. Oh, I'm sorry. Here, I'll put it back down here. Okay, let's see if there are any other questions. Uh, Marcella says, I assume you don't drink coffee. You would be correct in that assumption. With our religious beliefs, we do not drink coffee. And to tell you the truth, it's not something that I have ever wanted to do. We also don't drink alcohol. Um, and because I was taught from a young age and then I also just decided to form my own, what I would call testimony of if that was something I wanted to do in my life, um, I decided not to. It's never been something that I like have struggled with or wanted. Um, yeah. I do drink soda that has caffeine in it. Um, I don't drink tea, unless it's herbal tea. And I feel 100% okay with all of those things. 
Marcella says, your extended family does not like to be on camera. Hmm. Some do. Some were kind of hesitant at first. Um, but mostly I just try not to make anybody feel uncomfortable. So if they have asked me not to show them, then I will not show them. Um, if they don't care, then I will show them in the background. But unless they like want to be a part of the video and like come and be part of it, then I don't make anybody be part of a video. And I will respect anybody that asks me not to make them a part of the video the best that I can. So, um, yeah, I have certain, um, family that would really, really like to be a big part of it, but they're not quite sure. I find that little kids, um, don't know quite how to act <laughs> when they get on camera. Sometimes they go a little crazy. Um, sometimes they get really shy. So it's kind of funny. She, somebody, um, assumes that we are LDS. Yes, we are members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So when somebody says LDS, that stands for Latter-day Saints. Um, but we want to remember that we are, uh, we want to make sure that people realize that we um, are followers of Jesus Christ. So we try and say the whole name, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. You may have heard us referred to as Mormons in the past, but we do not worship Mormon. We worship Jesus Christ. So we want to make sure that... Um, we just want to make sure that we, so we try and always use the proper name of the church whenever possible. Oh, I also have Miss Luna. We don't want to forget Miss Luna. All right, so that is all the assumptions that I have. I kind of wish I was doing this live so that I could ask for any more questions, but I think I did just hear renters coming into our apartment here next door to me. So I'm gonna just say that that's the end of it. And I'm gonna finish wrapping the last few gifts. And um, I hope that you all have a very Merry Christmas. And I continue to pray for all of you and um, those of you that might be struggling during this time. I know that Christmas can be a hard time. It can be a light time full of light and love, but it can also be a difficult time because of different circumstances that are out of your control. So I pray that you can feel the love and the light from us and um, have a wonderful Christmas. Bye. Uh, I love Thanks for watching. Like this video. Hit the subscribe button and the bell. Oh, hit the subscribe button and the bell. Thank you so much for being here. We'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.